Hello again there everyone and welcome back. We're hard at it again today on the Enterprise refit build out here in the shop tonight. And uh, what I'm working on today is the saucer. I'm going to be gluing on the walls on that. We're going to show you some more seam and filling work on that. So that's going to be pretty fun. We'll take a look at what we're doing here real quick. You can see that uh, I've got my saucer set up here and I've been scuffing this down with some 320 paper here on the top side. Uh, getting this all ready for paint. And I'll be doing the same thing on these individual parts here. I've been using my little hobby knife to remove all the excess flash from the sprues and things. So that's working out pretty good. wanted to take a second here and show you guys my new little bench that I added in the shop here as well. You can see we've got all our little parts that we finished up ready to go over there. Now this is a pretty cool setup. It's all stainless steel and I picked this up over at Lowe's. You can see it's got a nice built-in pegboard and a nice overhead uh, fluorescent light there. And comes with this really nice wide... Uh, hard uh, surface, wood surface on the top, and so I can do a little bit more work over here. I needed this. I was looking for some more drawer space, and I'm getting bit, uh, so busy with all these projects here that uh, I needed some more room. So keeping all my paints in there, and I've got these nice drawers down here where I can keep all my uh, supplies and tools and everything. I've got one drawer here for uh, nothing but sandpaper and different type of uh, abrasives and things like that. So just thought I'd show you that. You can see um, something I didn't show in the last video. This is the fan tail. I started working on that and uh, you can see it's going to light up real nice. I painted it in all the little details there. Now one thing I did there on the bottom, if you can see that, is uh, I grinded a little bit out of that from behind. I'm going to do the Raytheon lighting method for that and right where the Enterprise name goes on that, um, that's going to be uh, nice and lit up. So uh, the Enterprise word will kind of glow there on the back. I thought that'd be kind of neat. And here you can see I've been working on the uh, uh, turbo lifts and they're all painted and uh, light blocked and I painted those blue so that when the lights are installed on the bottom there uh, you'll see that there's some nice light going to come through those and uh, so everything's pretty cool over here we're really happy with everything so far back over to the bench here I'll get my camera set up on the tripod and we'll start doing some work I'm going to install all of these uh, side panels these walls get those glued in place and then we're going to start filling in all the seams on them and getting that taken care of so Let's get rocking and rolling on that. I'll get the camera on the tripod set up and we'll get some work knocked out here. Be right back. Hey there everybody. Okay, well we're getting set up on the bench here and ready to go. But before I get started, I thought I'd go back and revisit these uh, putties here with you again. I got a couple questions uh, and comments on the video from the last go-around about uh, to be a little bit more specific about these. So here we go. Uh, now talking about this uh, Squadron Products putty again. This is really, really good stuff. It's been out in the modeling industry forever. Uh, again, it's used for uh, filling in uh, gaps and things like that, seams on your models, and uh, it dries really hard, and it, uh, it works really well with just about any kind of finishes. You won't have any kind of reactions or anything like, like that with this, and uh, it's used for filling larger gaps and uh, areas where you have your bigger seams. So, uh, and again, working with this acetone on it, you, uh, when you apply a little bit of it, you can, you can remove some of the excess so it'll save you a little bit of your sanding time. And I was asked uh, if the acetone bothers styrene plastic. Well, it doesn't harm the styrene at all. Uh, but you don't want to use it on any kind of uh, clear parts. We all know that uh, the clear parts that are included with a lot of these model kits, just about anything getting, getting on them really uh, screws those up and can cause crazing or fogging or all kinds of weird things, even causing it to crack. So you don't want to get any of this stuff on your, um, on your clear parts, obviously. And uh, over here with the uh, glazing and spot putty, uh, it's exactly as the name says. It says glazing and spot putty, uh, meaning that it's for repairing very minor imperfections and spots, uh, imperfections in your paint, little tiny gaps and things like that. You use this to top coat your other types of putties or fillers that you've used to fill in any really minor imperfections, but around joints or seams or anything like that, I don't, I don't really recommend this stuff because it doesn't dry uh, very hard. You can see the little bit that's smeared on the thing here. I'm scraping it right off. It's still really soft. So if you have, um, if you apply this on any kind of seams that you have flexing going on, let's say like the pylons of the, uh, the Reliant model or the pylons on the Enterprise refit here, where you have a little bit of that flexing action, this stuff is going to crack like crazy and you're gonna, really going to be displeased a few, two or three weeks after you finish the model and you start seeing all these cracks appear on it. And uh, so that's what this stuff is used for. Now another type of filler that's out there that people are starting to use, I've been using this for years, uh, I'm in the automotive body industry, and uh, this is called Glaze Coat by Evercoat. There are two different types of this material. This is, is uh, Evercoat 417. I don't happen to remember what the other uh, 
uh, model number is for the uh, metal coat, uh, but this is actually called glaze coat. Now, these two different types are for two different specific things. This is for uh, use on plastics and other type of materials like that. It was developed to work with the flexible plastic bumpers and other parts on the new cars, so it has a little bit of a flex agent built into it, so you can move it around a little bit and it won't crack. The metal glaze is for working with metal parts, and it doesn't have the flex agent built in, so if you're using that on models and plastics, it may stick on there, but it uh, it's going to crack and come apart later. It's not meant to be bonded on plastic, so kind of keep that in mind when you uh, think about getting some of this stuff. This is really, really good material. It's a two-part. You basically use this material, and then there's a little tube of hardener that it comes with. You mix a little bit of the hardener in, stir it up, and uh, it will harden on its own through a chemical reaction. Uh, and it's really nice and creamy and smooth, and it tends to dry without any pits in it. So... Um, it's really nice for working with these models. A lot of people have started using it. So that's just a little bit more about this stuff. Um, we're going to be using some of this again today after we get working on the uh, saucer. We're going to be putting the walls on it now. And what I'm doing right now is I'm uh, identifying where all these little parts go uh, around this uh, edge. On this one section here, you can see uh, we have the officer's lounge. Now I've got to do a little bit of modifying on that. Uh, there's some photo etch parts that go in there, so we probably won't get this piece put on today, but we're going to work our way around the perimeter here and uh, get all these glued down. We're going to start doing some scene filling on that so I can show you uh, how good this works with um, using uh, a little bit of filler and a little bit of this acetone to wipe off our seam so that what the problem a lot of modelers have ran into is you have these really nice fine grid lines that are on this thing. And so when you go to start sanding and getting rid of all the extra putty on there, a lot of that gets wiped out. So what we're going to do today is hopefully show you how you do that without losing a lot of that detail. And uh, I think you'll be pretty happy with the results. So let me get everything figured out here on the parts. We'll get going. I'll be right back with that. And here we go. Stay tuned. Okay, guys. Well, it's been a little bit of time here. And I wanted to uh, show you what I've been working on here. I've been going around gluing these little walls all the way around the edges of the uh, saucer here and what I'm doing is I'm being really careful and making sure that these seams on the top and the bottom and the edges are all lining up perfectly flush with the uh, with the edge there so there's no overhangs and there's no high low spots and also uh, that I'm not getting any step between each panel here I don't want one to be higher or lower and you can see I've got these all lined up really nice so that all we have there is just a really small little gap in between each panel. And um, that's how we're going to save a lot of time and effort on uh, doing our filling here in just a minute. And uh, what I wanted to show you also is that there's quite a bit of modification that needs to be done to this. Uh, you can see that you have, let me zoom on it for you a little bit here. Let me get a shot of this one section right over here. Okay, if you can see that it has this little wall that's all the way around the edge of the saucer. And so when you put your uh, outer walls on here with the window ports, you'll see that these uh, walls will actually block the, uh, the lighting uh, window ports there. So if you were to do some lighting inside this, all that's going to be blocked off. So what I did is I marked each spot where the windows were, and I took my Dremel tool and just grinded these little areas out all the way around. Now also you can see here that... Uh, there's also a little spot where each little light goes, like your navigation lights, uh, all the way around the perimeter here. And um, also the little light where the, uh, I guess those are called the uh, thrusters. Uh, the little, uh, I guess I could show you better here on the top here. This little area here where it's a, a thruster bank on each side. No, those were also blocked in. So uh, what I did is I just cut out that little section there, and that allowed me to put a bulb in there. Uh, when I get ready to do the lighting on that. So uh, the ones here at the back uh, where there's two little uh, beacons that go right next to the impulse deck, those are actually on the inside of the wall so those aren't any problem. But the rest of these all had to be uh, cleared away so that once this wall is put on you can get in there to work on it. Uh, so just thought I'd point that out and that's something that I didn't see or notice right away and I actually had started working this in and like whoops those are going to be blocked. So anyway let's start putting these back in. Um, I've got this little, let me pull back out here for you. I've got this one here ready to go on. Just using good old testers red glue. This stuff is uh, plenty fine for working on styrene models. You don't have to go out and buy the really expensive glue. Uh, a lot of people 
think that you know more money is better in modeling and that's in most cases totally not not true uh, this stuff's been around forever now like I said I mentioned it on a couple other videos uh, your this hasn't been painted whatsoever so there's no paint contamination on it but paint contamination is the number one reason you'll get a failure when you glue your parts together and so it's important to keep that in mind now I'm just going to set this on here really careful and do just like I've been doing all the way around the perimeter here. Uh, slide it in place. And uh, I kept my glue on the inside edge there so I wouldn't glob any on the outside that I would have to worry about sanding off later. And I'm just easing this in here. And this one we've got a nice tight fit. Now all I'm doing is making sure that that edge, this lip right around the bottom here is not hanging out and it's not low. So we probably won't even have to put any filler on that little lip there on the top. Uh, the only place we're going to have to put any filler is these little seams right here uh, on the edges. This one here is being a little bit stubborn, so I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the back side of it. And I got a little bit more than I wanted in there, so I'll just take my hobby knife and get it back out. Okay, and that seems to be holding pretty good for us. Like I said, I'm just paying extra attention here to get these uh, panels just right where I don't want to step in that. What I mean by that is it's high and it's low, so that when I start sanding this, all I'm going to be sanding is just a little bit of uh, filler, and we're going to use our acetone once we put our, our uh, filler on there, and that's going to... Um, uh, make our sanding very minimal so we don't have to sand very much. I'm just going to add this last one now. As I mentioned, I'm not going to be putting the one for the rec deck in just quite yet because I don't want to, uh, I have to do a bit of work on that to get the window just right on it and add that photo etch part. So we'll go as far as we can here. Okay, and then this piece is ready to go in. And keep in mind that when you put these on, these little this one here has the airlock on it. Same thing on the other side, and that has to go in a specific location. Otherwise, the general window ports, uh, it doesn't matter where they go. They kind of line up uh, by themselves. As I said, I'm just checking this to make sure we're flush with the next panel and that our uh, seam here on the bottom is lining up really good. And I'm really happy with that. These look really good. Okay, so you can see, let me zoom in on it a bit for you here. You can see that all the way around that saucer now we've got the walls installed and everything is really nice and flush. Everything's fitting really good. And uh, I'm going to have to let this dry for a good hour or so before it'll be strong enough to start sanding on it. And what we'll be doing next is we're going to come back and putting in our little filler and I'll show you how we do our acetone trick again to uh, add the filler to these little seams here and keep this minimum. So hopefully what our goal is going to be here is we're going to keep these nice little sensor grid lines intact without sanding those all away. So I'll be back in just a little bit with that guys. Stay tuned. Okay everybody, well we're back here and we're set up again. I've allowed this to dry for a little while, so now it's time to go in and start filling some of these seams. And uh, I've got a really nice feel all the way around this uh, perimeter of this saucer here. It's really came out nice. It's all dried up really well, so let's start over here in this little corner and work on this first seam. I'm using some of this uh, red spot potty here because this stuff is nice for doing just this really small stuff like this. And we don't have to worry about these edges flexing or anything, so we're just going to go in here and start putting this on. And I'm just going to make sure I pack it into those seams really well. And we don't have any step or anything there, so that's really, really nice. And what we're going to do here in just a second is we're going to come back and use some of this acetone. And we're going to wipe off all the excess on that. 
so that we don't have to do hardly any sanding on that. We'll just leave a little bit in the seam there and that's going to be it. So this is just going to take a second or two here. Just want to make sure I get all the way across it. We're going to have some nice sensor bands on this one and they're not going to all be sanded off. So I hope that's something you guys can use when you build one of these. That's been a problem that you see a lot of guys going through. I had been thinking about this for a while getting ready to build this and how I was going to tackle that problem. And uh, Again, something a little bit different here. Get around. The, this is the area where we're, this is a little airlock. There's a photo etch part that goes on there to cover a lot of that up anyway. So, okay, and we've got that one little panel here where we're not going to do yet. That's for the officers' lounge. I've got to modify that a little bit and get the photo etch put in. So that came out well. Let me get ready here, and I'll get my rag set up. I'm using some more of this acetone, and we're just going to go in there real carefully and. Using this little microfiber towel again, we're just going to start wiping a little bit of that off and get rid of the excess. Start off here where we started here. Just going to leave a little bit in there right where the seam is, but I want to get it all out of that uh, area where the uh, bands are. You can see that there. I don't want my sensor bands blocked. <laughs> okay, and you can see that that takes that off there really easily. Doesn't hurt the plastic at all. And I've got a little bit around the edges of that. Uh, airlock uh, position there, but uh, that's no problem. We'll take care of that. We'll get that out of there. And like I said, there's another little piece that uh, that covers that up. A little bit more acetone on here. And again, adding this stuff to it is going to help it dry too. Uh, it, we're going to have this stuff on here so thin now that uh, it's going to dry really quickly. Moving on to the next one. You can see our, our filler is just sitting in there in that little seam and it looks really small because we have very minimal seams on this. We didn't we didn't uh, we did a lot of prep work to get that lined up really nice and straight so that's why that looks so good. Okay, that one's good. Okay, and there we have it. You can see that they're all uh, cleaned up really good. And now what I'll do is just let this dry for a few minutes. And I'm gonna, basically, instead of using some sandpaper, I'm going to use a little bit of steel wool and I'm going to go over that and then what we're going to do is we're going to see how it looks. I can feel with my fingers it's all feeling really nice and smooth uh, and then what we'll do is we'll probably we'll probably put one more coat on that and repeat the process again and what we're doing is just building it up a little bit at a time on there. We, that's that's one thing that's really important about this model building is and I mentioned and I know over and over but don't get in too big of a hurry and it might take you two or three attempts on each one of these processes to get it where you like it and uh, you can do some really nice work and everything can, can come out really clean so I'll let this dry for a few minutes we'll uh, steel wool it really quick and then we'll come back and we'll do the whole thing all over again be right back okay guys well we're back here on the bench again and you can see that uh, I was patient I just kept applying a little bit of uh, primer on this and then uh, sanding it with some steel wool 
and I've gone around this a few times now. Like I said, everything doesn't work out perfectly on the first attempt, so you got to just keep working on it. But you can see here in the shot that all of our little seams have all been filled in real nice, and we saved our little uh, sensor uh, sensor band detail there. We didn't sand it or wipe any of that out, so it's really good. And uh, we're going to be uh, once we get to the part two when we do the assembly, there's a decal that goes over top of this too, so that's going to uh, look nice because it'll still have all the ribbing and everything in there like it's supposed to. So I hope that little tip will help you out. And again, that didn't take too long and it wasn't too hard to do using a little bit of that acetone and uh, being patient. So that's going to be about a wrap for this video, guys. Uh, what I'm going to do on the next video is I'll be back and I'm going to be showing you how to put the uh, photo etch part in here. We've got to modify this a little bit to uh, uh, get our uh, photo etch window to fit in here. And we'll be doing the same filling and seam filling process that we did. And then uh, we're going to work in this little area here at the back where we've got our rec deck and the uh, uh, photo etch window frame parts that go in there. We've got to modify this a little bit and we'll finish that up. And then uh, a lot of our work on the saucer will be done. We're going to actually modify and move the bridge a little bit forward on this too at some point. Because we're going to have a nice spotlight coming out of that that's going to light up our uh, registry number in here and everything. My friend uh, Jamar from over at... Sci-Fi Model Action is actually going to help me out with that. He did a really nice job on his, and he's going to put up a video about how to do that, so I'll be looking forward to that. So that's going to be a wrap, guys. Uh, we'll catch up with you in the next couple of days with some more work on the Enterprise Refit. So until we see you then, happy modeling, and take care, everybody.